Will you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight because you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So Naomi has these sons and they fall in love with these wives or at least they marry them and together they make a life. They become a family. They get bonded together in a way they had never been bound together before, in a way they could not be bonded together, except through those promises that they had made to one another. And then one day, it all changes. The sons die. The bonds are broken. There's no reason for those girls to stay with Naomi. No reason for Orpah and Ruth to hang around. They're young after all. There may be other men out there for them and they're in a foreign land with a foreign mother-in-law. Why wouldn't they go home? So Naomi does the right thing. Go home, girls, she says. Don't stay with me. Why would you stay with me? You have your whole lives in front of you. This was terrible what happened to you. But it's not the end. You can start again. You can go to a more beautiful place than this. You can have a more gorgeous life than the one you're going to lead if you stay with me. Go home. And you know what Ruth says. You know what she does that's so important, that's so big, that they name a book after her, that they write her story down and put it in the Bible so that generation upon generation will know what she's done and follow the example of this saint. Entreat me not to leave thee, she says. Don't you dare tell me to go home, Naomi. They assign this story on All Saints Day, not for nothing. But because it is and always has been seen since the earliest days of the church as the model for church membership itself. And what it means to be the church on earth and the church in heaven. What they used to call the church militant and the church triumphant. We've gotten over that. We join the church. You new members who are going to join today, you're going to join the church. You're going to stand up here and just like wedding vows, you're going to make promises. There, are, there is almost no hope of you keeping perfectly. You're going to make promises that no one can keep perfectly, but that you're going to try hard to do, ask God's help to do. And we're going to make promises back to you. And when we make those promises and ask God to seal them, to bind them, it'll be like we're grabbing each other's hands and God is wrapping her own Holy Spirit around that place where we join. And then one day, if you don't get a job somewhere else, if you don't get mad and storm off, if you don't get called to some far city by something that we can't control, one day you will die as a member of this church. And nobody quite knows what's coming after that. Heaven or another world like this, oblivion or you staying you, we have ideas we have proclamations we make about that, but nobody really knows what happens when you cross that veil. Here's what could happen. We could say to you, go on. Don't stay here with us. This was terrible. Yes, what just happened to you, but think of the life that's before you. Go home to God. There's so much ahead of you. Don't let us hold you back. Go on to the next thing. Forget about us. Why would you stay here married to us old ladies in the church? And if this works the way we think it works, if it works in the way that we're counting on it working when you join the church, that Holy Spirit that has bound our hands together, it will not 
let them be pulled apart. It will keep them bound tightly. You may go on to some new life. You may experience some reality we can't even imagine. You may spend all your days singing hallelujahs to the glory of God. And yet, still we will be bound together. They used to call it the cult of saints in the Middle Ages. They didn't mean it in a bad way. That word cult, it sounds nasty today, but when they said it originally, it didn't have those negative tinges. What it meant was the practice of looking at people who had gone before, people who had lived particularly holy lives, maybe even people that had performed miracles. Looking at them after their death and calling out to them, not just looking at them, calling out to them, even praying to them, begging them for their help. And you know that that got very weird. Relics, body parts, all sorts of strange prayers, paying people in heaven to try to help you here, praying nonstop here on earth for the people who had gone on to some torture that we imagined, hoping to help them get out. You know that it got weird, but here's the beautiful truth at the center of that. That once you are the church, you are always the church. That the saints that could help you on heaven continue caring about you and longing, trying, working to help you when they go on. That you, who were a help to them when they were alive, you can still be a help to them in the next place. The veil is not strong enough to unwind the Holy Spirit that's bound around our hands. Nothing is. It got weird, to be sure, but it started as gorgeous. So that's why we read the story of Ruth and Naomi on All Saints Sunday. The day when we remind ourselves that once you are the church, you are always the church. Once you're a saint in these pews, you are always a saint in this place. The world has Halloween and they say that one night of the year, the spirits can roam freely. That one night of the year, the veil is torn and they can pour through to celebrate here on earth for good or for ill. We don't need Halloween. We don't need to wait every year for a certain date to come around. We don't have it just once a year. When we want to meet our saints, all we have to do is set the table and believe that this table, that the Holy Spirit that presides, on it, uh, uh, that presides upon it is the same Holy Spirit that binds our hands together with those who have gone before. All we have to do is say, come God, come, and the veil tears wide. The heavens open and the saints who have gone before gather around this table just as surely as you and I will in a few minutes. We do not have to wait for Halloween. All we have to do is say, come, Holy Spirit, come. And then at this table appears Bill Andrews, the lion for justice. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And at this table shows up Alice Allen, and she will be organizing everything. And Jack Allen will amble up with that sweet smile of his. All we have to do is say, come Holy Spirit, come. And there is Menno and he will be asking hard questions and wanting you to study the truths of the faith as hard as you can. Come Holy Spirit, come. And then comes Jean Henderson with a paintbrush in her hand. And then comes Ruth McMahon. And then comes Pat Partridge. And on and on and on all the way to the beginning. And then we feast. And we never let go. If you believe that, say amen.